Right, we're just going to have a quick look through at some of the daily checks that we will devise you to do on a T-series combine. Um, there's not too many to do. We've got a few greasers. We've got the greasers on the Hillmaster. We've got one on the grease bank here now, and it says 10 hours. Um, if they're not on the grease tubes, they're just down around on the corner on the pivot. The sticker doesn't say, but this one here, I would do him every day as well. I would just give him a pump. And the same on the header drive. On the hill masters especially, I would keep an eye on the, the sliding tube because they're moving all the time when the combine's pivoting and the header's pivoting, this tube's going in and out and if it's not lubricated, he will find that he will damage the fairings. Grease the UJ on the end of the shaft, I would just pop the guard off and then you can pull the guard back and you can get to the greaser nice and easy and um, the thought of doing that is worse than actually doing it. Elevator adjustment, so for the feeder house and elevator we've got the adjuster here, it's a bit like that, slightly for John Deere's. You undo the 16mm bolt there with a 24mm spanner and then you you push him out, you lengthen him to tighten the chain up. There is some inspection hose in the top. Um, the, the best way of seeing it, if the tension is right is just to hit the chain and if he just bangs on the top of the slats, it's about the right tension. Greasing intervals, and if you look closely, that will tell you what 400 hours, 50 hours, um, and it tells you the 10 hour ones, and there's only three 10 hour ones on each side. And um, that back one there is for the other end of the hill master pivot there. And that's the same on both sides. So you've got one each side on the back of the ram and the grease banks on the front. We've got all the chains and belts and tensions with indicators. So you can just have a visual inspection as you go round and just see another one up there for the belt at the top. On the side, with the adjustment side of it, we've got a handle here on these newer T series that they put the stone track on the D owner in and out. Uh, instead of having the guard off and taking and unscrewing the catch in and out, you can just do it with the lever. We've also got your two speed belt here, two speed drive for your T drum. And it tells you here quite clearly that the sort of black and the yellow indicate a mark for the belt where the belt goes so the black one is fast and the tortoise the yellow one is slow and the handle for it is just there and he comes up and then you flip the belt over and then you put him back on like that the returns elevator we've got here historically the same as he's always been we've got the 15 mil spanner you need here to take this cap off and slacken off the fall but then you slacken that one off and you wind the, the shaft down and that tightens the returns and the chain. Straw chopper maintenance, we've got no creases on the straw chopper now and the clutch to put the chopper in and out of gear is just a dog clutch and you line the teeth up and you just snap the clutch in. Clean grain elevator, we've got the same adjustment with 15mm spanner. Undo the adjuster and wind it down and that will tighten the clean grain elevator chain up. We've got the greaser indicator again, and it tells you if you look up there exactly the same as the other side, and the greasers, it's all mirror image of the other side, so it's quite easy to do. We've then we've got the adjustments for the T series concave. You know, we've got the A and the B there, and we've got we've got the diagram is the top one is for this one, and the bottom one is for this one. So A is the concave up. So if he's down, the concave's up. This one, if he's back, the concave is in A, is in the tight position, and C is in the slack position. So historically, if you were doing barley, hard thrashing crops, you would have them both on the tight position, oil seat rate. We would like to see it in the slack position. We've got a fuel filter here. You can visibly see him, it's a, it's a plastic filter, you need an inch spanner um, to undo it. You undo the tap, you can clean it out, you can clean those doors, the filters out. Uh, quite a simple job and quite visual. Got grain tank, drains there that we can 
take it out, leave it cranked over to one side and it will let the water out. We're going to leave it out at night and this can um, get some heavy rain. We've got on the feeder housing, we've got the feeder housing drive chain. He needs to be quite tight. You will find that each day you will come back and he'll be quite slow. Down, and you can physically feel him go over centre, he's locked in, and, and then that is down and then that the rubber shout. A quick note with the feeder housing greasing, I would, there's this one here with the lateral tail, that he would pay to him every day, just one pump. And there's one in the middle with the lateral tilt, I would give him a pump every day as well. On the header, there are a fair few moving parts on the header, but there is not that much to do daily. They recommend that there's nothing to do daily, it's only 50 hours, but we've got a couple that we would do. So we give these pump every day. Um, keep an eye on your, when you've got oil seed rape, you're cutting oil seed rape, just keep an eye on for the first day or so, just these bolts and everything stays tight because it is very, very quick. If you start to cut loose, it will shake itself to pieces. On the auger, we've got a finger tying in and we've got the tape and stick in. Where to have the fingers, it's a 16. Do need to be tight because they will slip. These are marked so we know where they go and we can see if they've moved, if he's moved. Or not. On this one now they've made it easier and you've got independent marks so we know where we're going. yellow one there and the dipstick is on the end of the filler cap. All belts are self-tensioning on the on the fan drive. On the tail shaft gearbox we've got the dipstick there and that is to indicate how much oil is in the PTO gearbox. The correct way to check that with a pro drive transmission is to start the engine, leave the engine running for a minute or two, stop the engine, let things level out and then dip the oil. And that will give you the true reading. Hydraulic oil, we've got a sight indicator there, and we've got a filter there. Always these these fillers always raised from the top of the tank so you can wipe them off easy. Make sure you wipe them off and um, you should always do it with a head oil. Air filters, um, the book now John Deere is a rule, they say leave it until the light comes on, the light is reasonably sensitive so it should be okay to do it.